Thank you, Marti. Merci, Marti. Uh, we are going to follow with the first uh, table. And as uh, you said, I mean, we, we always try to mix uh, experiences, the new programs, the projects from the, the roots, and also some reflections uh, about the nowadays uh, debates uh, on commemorating Europe. But the first table, uh, it's my honor also to, to give the floor and to say hello to the colleagues from the European Commission. First of all, uh, Gilles Pelayo, bonjour. Uh, he is uh, head of unit uh, of the SERF program at the EACEA uh, agency, no? E-A-C-E-A. And uh, he was uh, the responsible also to improve and to follow this project and how to move this project from one uh, general direction to the other and how it's now uh, bigger than 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 it was before and the challenges nowadays and how 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 is this program is going to to continue and to follow and also to say hello to Peter Fabian Hayek from the this is justice and he is responsible of uh, uh, the remember the strand of this surf program too surf program it's uh, citizenship equality rights and values and how uh, these remembrance uh, public policies are uh, interaction with this uh, platform to help these uh, stakeholder uh, civil society associations inside this citizenship program. So first of all, uh, Gilles, je te cède la parole. Bonjour. Bonjour. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Constance, Marty, uh, for the for the house and uh, and Jordi. For, for your own, it's always very good to, um, to be back in this um, format of, of meeting, uh, annual, and it, it's nice because it, uh, it allows us to really, as the name indicates, take a bit stock of the um, elapsed year. And um, the, uh, the purpose of our intervention will be uh, to, to take stock of how the, uh, you know, the funding programs uh, on uh, remembrance have evolved over the, the past 12 years. I will start with a very, um, let's say, a general scene setup presentation on the overall parameters of the program. And then Peter uh, Fabian Ayek, who is a call coordinator on, uh, on remembrance, will share more focus and more detailed information on, uh, on this part of the program, which is, I think, of uh, greater interest to the participants and to the member of the, the Europe network and, and other, uh, let's say, uh, friendly participants. So just to say that um, the, uh, the elapsed year has been quite, uh, quite eventful. Uh, when we left each other last year in December 2020, um, the new programs were not uh, finalized uh, uh, yet completely. Um, the um, let's say the uh, even even if there was a kind of political agreement uh, at the top of the uh, EU uh, level, let's say the exact parameters and uh, and budgets uh, for uh, remembrance and generally for our program were not set yet. Today we are in a much uh, much better place because. Um, we, uh, we have the Citizens Equality Rights and, uh, and Values uh, program that has confirmed the uh, interest and the importance attached to, to working on uh, remembrance uh, issues on, uh, on history and, um, and that is good and that is uh, comforting for actors like you. In terms of the, the budget also, uh, the political signal has been sent that this is an uh, area of um, growing importance because uh, from uh, an initial, let's say, estimate of uh, in excess of 600 uh, million euro, the budgetary authority that is the, the European Parliament and the Council have pitched it, pitched it for the, uh, the programming period 21-27, at, finally at 1.55 billion euro for the overall program and not only for, uh, for remembrance. So this is quite significant. And since we are all still here by the European Parliament, I would like to, to salute the, um, the pivotal role of the European Parliament in making this happen because um, members of the European Parliament on many sides of the, uh, the political spectrum have uh, really uh, supported 
this um, this program throughout the um, the negotiations. So so that's one one important point. Uh, the um, objectives of the citizens equality rights and, uh, and values uh, program are wider than just uh, remembrance indeed uh, uh, they, they are broad uh, the uh, the general objective is to to protect and promote the rights and values as uh, enshrined in the um, eu treaties and the eu charter uh, by supporting civil society organizations and local uh, actors or other stakeholders active at the local regional, national, and transnational level, because we also work with uh, local authorities in some components of the, the program. So uh, there are four major components in the, uh, in the program. The uh, union value strand, because a strong emphasis has been put on uh, union values. Under the union value strands, we, uh, we will do, we are already doing what we call operating grants. To, to civil society organizations. So uh, it's my privilege and pleasure that this is already a call for proposals that we have done. And uh, I can congratulate uh, your home for him being uh, selected again um, for a four years framework partnership uh, with us. So um, that gives you know, a long-term visibility to, uh, to big uh, partners at the, at the European level. And, and it's let's say uh, comforting to see that the important work done by the network will be able to to continue with our support over the the coming uh, four years. There is uh, a second strand that's called equality rights and gender uh, that is uh, managed by our colleagues in DG Justice, which is the successor of the Rights Equality and Citizenship Program. And then there's the, the third, trend, third strand called citizens engagement and participation. And that is uh, where remembrance activities are, are being uh, supported. So the, this strand is the, is the successor to the uh, Europe for Citizens uh, program. So it's been incorporated in this broader, bigger program. And the citizens engagement and participation strand, uh, I repeat, is, is where we will launch uh, calls for proposals on uh, remembrance, as um, as Peter will uh, will explain. There is a fourth strand called the Daphne strand, um, focused on the the fight against say, violence, notably domestic uh, violence, violence <clears throat> also against women, and it's um, also uh, an important uh, element of uh, of what we do. This is also managed by our colleagues in DG Justice. So that's globally uh, the, the, the scene that I wanted to, to set. Um, so confirmation of uh, the uh, growing importance of uh, working on, uh, on memory uh, issues. This has been confirmed at the political level. The um, evolution of you know, political uh, debates all across the continent illustrates even more than ever, uh, perhaps, the importance of having uh, transnational approaches to uh, history, to memory, to memories. And, um, and we will continue over the, uh, the coming now six years, because the first year is uh, already about to, to finish. I now give the, the floor to, to Peter Fabian Hayek, who will zoom in on the, um, the exact, uh, let's say, singularities and parameters of uh, the remembrance action within the program. Hello, so I'm Peter Fabian Hayek. Uh, just a little correction to, to Jordi. I am also from the, the agency, the European Education and Culture Executive Agency. I, I'm replacing uh, Johannes Bormann, who was supposed to be here from DG Justice, as, uh, as you very well said. So uh, my presentation will, um, <clears throat> will go about the, the, the 2022 edition of the European Remembrance Program, so the, the one that is uh, to come. And also, uh, I will briefly and uh, first and present, uh, ah, uh, sorry, uh, I share my screen. The, the results of the of 
the last call, which was 2021. Uh, this year, we, we published two programs, basically, because, uh, because of uh, the, the nature of, of uh, the EU programming. So uh, very recently, on the 16th of November, we have published uh, our last program. But first, let's speak uh, about the key figures of the 2021, which have been shared with the, with the applicants um, on Tuesday morning uh, through the funding and tender portal. And you can also uh, just show you, see it on the web page of the, of the 2021 program by going to topic updates. And here you can see all the, all the results. So basically, this year, uh, the deadline was on the 22nd of June at the uh, 17 hour Brussels time. It is always this, uh, uh, as opposed to the Europe for Citizens program, where it was at noon. But uh, okay, it's just uh, an interesting fact. Uh, the the cost budget was uh, four million five hundred fifteen thousand euros. We received ninety five proposal, of which uh, we had eighty four eligible. We have selected twenty seven proposals uh, on the main list for funding. So we began the contracting uh, with them, and four proposals were placed on the reserve list. So for the next call, the twenty twenty two Europe for European Remembrance, sorry, uh, the call has been. Uh, published on the 16th of November, as I said. Sadly, however, due to technical issues that we that is above our <laughs> our head, so we cannot uh, solve it ourselves. We need for this uh, the, the 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 IT uh, department uh, to to be able to solve this problem. So we we expect to open it as soon as possible. The deadline for submission will be on the 24th of March, uh, 2022. Uh, the evaluation will run from March to June, uh, notification of results from June to July. And uh, we expect to, to start the signature of the grant decision in August, <clears throat> and which will last until October. Um, yeah, sorry. Just a second, I need to fix this here. Okay, voila. So, the budget for this uh, new call is uh, 8 million euros and um, um, a drastic change compared to the Europe for Citizens program where we also had the European Remembrance uh, uh, action is that there are no more limits to the to the maximum grant requested in this uh, program. This is a lump sum type of grant, uh, as I will explain. The objective of the of the call is is to support projects aimed at commemorating defining events in modern European history, including the causes and consequences of authoritarian and totalitarian regimes, and that raising awareness among European citizens of the common history, culture, cultural heritage and values, thereby enhancing their understanding of the Union, its origins, purpose, diversity, and achievements of the importance of mutual understanding and tolerance. So our priorities, we have two priorities, um, under the first priority, applications uh, are expected to, to commemorate research and to teach about crimes committed under the totalitarian and authoritarian regimes with a priority on Holocaust remembrance, research and education, but not exclusively uh, Holocaust. This is uh, the first priority, but uh, projects under this priority can also focus on other crimes committed under totalitarian and authoritarian regimes in the modern European history, of course. Under the second priority, projects should focus on the key role that resistance plays in fighting occupation, overthrows totalitarian regimes and paves the way for democratic transitions in Europe. Projects under this priority should analyze and highlight resistance and organized opposition or highlight the democratic transition, including attempts providing justice for victims or focus uh, on how the 
EU accession influenced democratic standards and practices of the new democracies throughout the accession process. Of course, there might be overlaps between these two priorities. So the, the projects, I mean, the applications and the projects can treat both of the priorities if they want, but they should at least uh, focus on one of those two priorities. So yeah, uh, in order to be eligible, the activities should be in scope with the objectives of the program and they should uh, address one or both of uh, the two priorities. As I said, they should include minimum two different organizations, develop two different eligible organizations, uh, develop different types of activities and make them accessible to everyone, involve different target groups, preferably, they should be implemented preferably at transnational level. They should share and promote memory, promote the memory and legacy of the crimes committed by totalitarian regimes, as well as research to curb distortion. Um, as uh, Jordi already mentioned this uh, during his introductory speech. And they should also foster a culture of remembrance and understanding. So what we expect from this project is to <clears throat> is to allow a European approach to history related to Holocaust and to add the European dimension to relevant debates on important historical events and moments of the recent European history. They should contribute uh, to create lasting changes in participants' attitude towards European history, its values and its culture, to counter Holocaust denial and distortion, which is at the uh, at its peak now, uh, when uh, in these times, apparently. The, to identify, safeguard, and make available archival materials, uh, testimonies, and authentic sites for education purposes, commemoration, and research, and to encore a common culture of respecting fundamental rights and EU values in the target audience. So, what should um, this will be the technical part of my presentation for those who want to apply to our program, uh, I mean, to our um, call. So the proposal submits, should be submitted electronically. Uh, and I will come back to our home page just to have a practical view. So when um, <clears throat> this is the, the new call uh, home page, European Remembrance 2022. So here you might find uh, all the links to the relevant documents in the topic conditions and documents. You will find uh, the budget overview um, and uh, all the metadata on the on on the <clears throat> on the call. And as soon as uh, it will be opened here, you will be able to. Uh, to access the submission forms that I will also show later, if the time permits. Uh, and I'm coming back to my presentation. So the, or not. Okay, so the, the proposal should be submitted electronically, as I say, through the FNTP portal. They should be complete and contain the mandatory annexes and the, they cannot exceed 70 pages. I have to say that it, it should be sufficient uh, normally to, to have this. You can, uh, you, there are some, um, how to say, indications in the part B, as we call it, the, that you should respect for lump sum proposals such as, the, such as this one. Uh, and if you respect them and uh, you you don't duplicate tables that are not used uh, for lump sum, you can also gain pages if you want, uh, if you need. So the to be eligible applicants <clears throat> should be legal entities, uh, public or private bodies from eligible countries. For the time being, uh, only EU member states are eligible, but uh, we are expecting to, to have uh, other countries associated to our programs. As soon as uh, they begin negotiations with, the, with us, we can begin the, the, uh, uh, the negotiations on the association agreements, which will allow them then to join the program. We try to update uh, our sites uh, 
on the eligibility of countries. I mean, not try, but we do. Um, but for the time being, only EU member states are eligible. So if you intend to involve uh, non-member states, they can be associated partners in the project, uh, which is also allowed by the new uh, uh, proposal template. So the, um, the applicants should be public or regional authorities or non-profit organizations, including civil society organizations, survivors associations, and cultural youth, education, and research organizations. Applicants and partners should be registered in the participants register and should have a PIC number. At the application stage, this PIC number should not be valid. They can, uh, they just have to create a PIC number. So the other conditions is that, uh, as I already said, uh, the consortium should be composed at least of two applicants, two eligible applicants, because associated partners are not uh, are not applicants per se and are not beneficiaries. So eligible activities, uh, I have already uh, explained this. The geographic location, other than the, the eligible countries, the activities should also be organized in eligible countries. Eligible, I mean, eligible for funding. You can always uh, organize uh, activities outside the eligible countries, but then the, the activities that are organized there will not be eligible. The project must comply with uh, the ethics and EU values, as uh, described on, in the Article 2 of the Treaties on the European Union, Treaty on the European Union, and Article 21 of the EU Charter of the Fundamental Rights. And um, they must also comply with, uh, child, I mean, applicants should have a child protection policy as soon as they will uh, uh, they will interact with children or will will, on, will involve children in uh, their activities if not or if i mean if uh, some members of the consortium will involve uh, um, children in their activities those members should have a child protection policy this is uh, mandatory uh, so at the later stage, uh, the financial capacity will che be checked for those that are selected uh, based on the, the rules that are established in the, in the program. But the operational capacity is, uh, is uh, checked uh, by the experts uh, and assessed, assessed together with the award criteri criterion quality. The, the award criterion are the following, relevance, quality and impact. The relevance has a minimum pass score of 25 points uh, out of 40. Uh, quality uh, has a maximum score of 40 and impact has a maximum score of 20. Uh, and the project's uh, overall, I mean the application's overall pass score is 70. So if a project doesn't reach, uh, an application doesn't reach uh, 70 points, or in relevance 20, 25 points, then it uh, cannot be selected for funding. <clears throat> the, I must also, as you will see, um, put an emphasis on the gender perspective uh, of the projects because it's integrated in, in the relevance part and in the, in the quality part and uh, indirectly also in the, in the dissemination impact uh, part uh, of the project. Uh, this is an overarching aspect and uh, should be uh, taken really into account uh, during the, the planning of the of the activities and the and the call. So, the under the sub criterion uh, sub, uh, under the criteria relevance, the following uh, sub criteria are are checked. So whether the the project is relevant to the objectives and the priorities of the call. If the needs are clearly defined and uh, uh, the needs assessment is clearly established in the project, if the target group is clearly defined and um, and uh, the gender perspective is also taken into account in the selection of the target group and uh, other aspects, if uh, the project contributes to the EU strategic and legislative context, whether it has an 
European and transnational and or transnational dimension, if it uh, is uh, suitable to transfer good practices and if it has a, a potential to, to develop mutual cross-border cooperation. Uh, voilà. So the, the award criterion quality will uh, treat uh, about the the clarity and consistency of the of the application and the future project, the logical links between the identified problems, needs, and the, the solutions, the methodology of implementation, with again the gender perspective as it is uh, highlighted in red. Uh, under this um, criterion, there, uh, it is also assessed how the project is feasible within the proposed time frame and um, yes so oh, sorry this is not what i wanted to do uh, this is what so and the, under the last uh, criteria criterion uh, uh, impact uh, we are looking for uh, the ambition and the expected long term impact of, uh, of the results on the target groups and the general public of the application, the appropriate dissemination strategy for ensuring sustainability and long-term impact, a potential for a positive multiplier effect and how the project is sustainable uh, on the long term if uh, and after the EU funding ends. So you can see in the new call, we have only three main criteria uh, compared to four that we have had before. So what makes a good proposal? It, uh, a good proposal should already have a, uh, uh, be in line with the policy priorities and have a clear focus. These its objectives should be realistic and relevant to the participating organizations and target groups. Uh, it should address real needs in the field. It should has, have a real a well-established methodology should be consistent with realistic project objectives, methodology, and activities. The budget um, should reflect the foreseen activities. It is especially important for lump sum projects because as uh, it is described in the call document, we, <clears throat> we are uh, promoting, uh, I mean, the, the lump sum is based on events. So it, it means that the, all your activities should be organized around events uh, as such to be able to to claim uh, to claim uh, funding. I'm sorry, my kids are having homeschooling and so so yes, and the budget should reflect on, on the foreseen activities. As I said, uh, coming back to this, the, the lump sum is established uh, through events. One event can be composed of several activities, but one event should be presented as one work package in the call for proposal, in the part B of the proposal, and, um, and uh, yeah, the deliverables should be um, organized around this. The partnership should be strong, which means that the, the partners, uh, and I will come that in the next screen, and the, the realistic, it should promote realistic and sustainable results and uh, a good uh, media coverage. So if you have a project idea in mind, before starting to complete the application, you have to take a uh, uh, time to formulate this idea, maybe download the, the, the project documentation and, um, and then uh, uh, review it uh, very well, try to, try to organize your ideas on how the, the, the data are requested from you and be sure that uh, your project fits into the European Remembrance objectives and priorities, of course, and ensure that the partners that are involved in the project uh, have been uh, have been involved in the creation of the of the project itself because we see sometimes that uh, partners don't even really know what the project is about and uh, until uh, its submission and that allow time as i said for drafting reviewing and redrafting the pro the, the projects so this is basically uh, 
the same. So this is again, um, partners should be familiar with the application and you should be uh, familiar with the implementation of the, the project. The, the numbers, dates and venues of the meeting should already planned in advance. Of course, this is a, an application is a plan, but if you have a strong plan, uh, uh, you have then um, you can formulate your ideas around that. So I don't uh, know if uh, I still have the time because then I will just present the technicalities. I don't know if someone can tell me if I still have the time or I think it's good. Uh, it's good. Yes, sorry. Yeah, carry on. Oh, okay, so this, this will be, uh, you know, the submission procedure on ver verifying the call, how to create your application and uh, the proposal structure. So first, again, I will go because, okay, we have the print screen, but uh, I think it's even better if, you, if we go directly to the web page and we go to the funding and tender portal of the commission which by now I think that uh, most of you must know. Uh, so this is, uh, I go to the home. So here, you, you can find us here in the Citizens Equality Rights and Values Program, serve. okay? But there are several, so you click here, you, you fall here and you can search on, on, on our programs and on the program and the, and the calls and the news on the program and, but, what I like to use is this one to find the calls or proposals and tenders. So here you can write serve or European European remembrance or just remembrance, and it will <clears throat> it will uh, show you the I mean the last one, which was the remembrance uh, 2020 of the European or Europe for Citizens program. And here, the already closed the uh, 2021 uh, call and the open one that, uh, that is here. So here you will find uh, the main topic uh, descriptions, as I said, topic conditions. And the, um, I will come to that, the standard proposal template and the lump sum calculator. I will show you uh, a print screen about this. The, it will be visible when you enter through the <clears throat> start submission, you will have to click on the button. It will lead you to the so-called SEP submission page. And there uh, you will be able to fill in the data, uh, uh, the, the main data for the applicants. So now I come back to the print screen. Um, okay, this is what you will see. You will uh, click on it, start submission, and uh, you will arrive to this page. So, in in if you don't have a pick or your uh, partner organization organization doesn't have a pick, they should first register uh, on. You have to go to again the funding and tender portal and uh, click on register, which will be in the upper right corner, and you register your organization. At this stage, please. Uh, be aware that only uh, as applicants, so here we are talking about multi-beneficiary projects, so all the partners are applicants as well, except the associated partners. So the applicants should have, should be uh, eligible, which means that they should be non-profit or local or regional authorities, which means that when you fill in uh, and you register, please, Take good care of filling it as non-profit if you are non-profit, and uh, because then uh, it can uh, cause problems uh, at a later stage. Uh, to okay, so <clears throat> then when all the pick numbers are ready, you can begin uh, the to create your application. So here you at this page uh, you can by typing. Uh, your organization number, you can uh, you can find the organization if it uh, has already a pick number, of course, and uh, you you put your pick number there and you you pick your organization. So the first organization will be, of course, the coordinator organization, the single point of contact between the commission and uh, and the, the project. And then you add one by one your organization. 
Here, of course, don't pay attention that this is a Carliti uh, page because uh, I I cannot show you pages since the, the project is, I mean, the 2021 call is already call, uh, closed, but uh, this is basically the same registry process. So by adding partners, you can again fill in with um, uh, pick numbers to find it and you can add them. You can also add uh, affiliated entities if, uh, if you need to and add associated partners uh, to your project. So um, the coordinator, as I said, is the main point of contact between the, uh, the commission parts of the of the application but the partners uh, are there also you know to help to reach uh, the objectives and solve the problem so the they we advise now since we moved from a mono beneficiary uh, project not only advise it is in the, it will be in the contract to have a, a consortium agreement in which you agree on the different aspects of the of the management of the project distribution of funds and so on and so forth um okay so this is the proposal structure the part a is the online form this is basically uh composed of the main key data on the organization on the budget distribution and uh, and the uh, keywords related to your project uh, and the abstract, of course. Uh, this you will fill in in the screens that I showed you here. Here you will have the possibility down to to fill in with the abstract that that will be then generated uh, when you go to save and go to next step and then uh, generate proposal. So the part B is an annex which you will be able to find at the, the yeah in this. Uh, print script we don't have it sadly but maybe ah yes here the part b is an annex part b templates are composed for our call from the lump sum calculator and the so-called part b the part b is the project description so this is where you have to describe your project from a to z with uh, all the data that are that are that you think are important and uh, are asked from the from the uh, the template uh, in the template sorry so the part b um, will you have to uh, uh, download it and then re-upload it as a pdf it can be maximum 70 pages you have to know that the 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 the, the program i mean this uh, this uh, interface will cut anything above 70 pages so if you have important data which are at the end of the projects which uh, i think if i'm not wrong are related to the child protection policy and um, this kind of thing it can be cut if you are above 70 pages you have to uh, take good care of entering uh, this page limit description of the or uh, so it contains a description of the projects and applicant organizations work packages activities um, the annex one is uh, the budget calculator template. I will uh, show you this uh, very soon. A uh, list of key, key previous projects for the last four years. This is also integrated in the part B. So if you have it inside, then it's also sufficient to have it there. The child protection policy can also be described uh, in the part B. And uh, uh, you should, uh, as much as possible, give if you have need a child protection policy and have a child protection policy which is a, a must then please give the, the your website when this child protection policy can also be found for uh, for experts to evaluate uh, but also develop it in the proposal the part c <clears throat> online is an online form which uh, contains mainly the the type of organizations the priorities that uh, you have chosen uh, and the the basic uh, indicators uh, on on for the parts 
T you will also find in this uh, main part okay. edit forms and you click on edit forms you, you you fall on the part A and if you click on part C you will fall on part C and if you download the part B you will of course have the part B's. So this is the structure of the part A. As I said, so the general information participants budget uh, and the part B is structures on or main structures are basically like uh, the structure of the the overall criteria so relevance quality impact the work packages and activities timetable and uh, ethics and EU values uh, um, part and other declarations so this is the its table of content uh, and this is how the the lump sum calculator looks like so here as you can see you have one event uh, which should be one work package in the, your part B and one event, the same C for country. Uh, and uh, here you have to define the, the in the calculator on, on whether it's in situ or online, how many countries uh, of residents of the participants are involved and how many participants uh, direct participants are involved if you have several activities <clears throat> uh, uh, for one event the part the, the participants should be unique participants i mean if one participant participates in several activities of the event he can he or she can be counted only once of course uh, so here uh, the part c uh, structures I have already explained and uh, yeah so up, up that was a quick ending to this uh, proposal because uh, yes so voila so if you need support you can uh, always go to the funding and tender portal and there click on the support you if you have technical problems don't leave the submission of your proposal to the very last day okay because there can always be server problems in the commission you can have access problems so if you can identify your access problems you can always do it the uh, beforehand and what i can suggest to you because this this um, so-called e-grants where the funding and tender opportunities portal where you submit your proposal you can always when you have submitted the proposal, you can always come back. You can say, okay, I want to withdraw it. Then you will still have the data, okay, to edit, but you can already see if you have a submission problems or, or something like this. You can always do a test. Uh, uh, you just have to, if you, if you don't want to, to keep it, you just have to withdraw it or delete it or, or whatnot. So you can always play with this, uh, with this page. I think it's, it's very useful compared to our a previous uh, um, <clears throat> a previous uh, platform that we had it is uh, it is much more user friendly in this respect uh, not in all respects but this respect it is uh, so you will have a, an online manual uh, which uh, okay, so which look like this you well you can have the the faqs on the portal uh, the <clears throat> the new call will be populated with the uh, faqs as soon as we can open the the call and uh, if you have uh, i mean co content related questions you can always uh, send them to the eacea hyphen serve at ec.europa.eu uh, and you you mark that you are you you highlight that you are requesting um, guidance for the european remembrance uh, uh call and then it will fall to to my and my colleagues uh, hand and we will uh, answer as soon as we can so these are other reference documents that you can find under the the tab how to participate with uh, the self-regulation work program standard application from the pdf model grant agreements and reporting templates <clears throat> And these are the, the useful links as I already presented them. So as I, uh, I think I didn't finish my idea on, <clears throat> so don't leave uh, at the last moment, but if you have technical problems, you 
have to contact uh, the help desk of uh, the IT help desk for the funding and tender portal, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, which will be displayed, of course, on the on the submission page. The help desk that you have to co contact, and I suggest you to put uh, the ECA hyphen serve at ec the Europe EU in <clears throat> copy. Uh, if this is in the last moment, they will probably ask you to send them your part, the, the last version of your part uh, B. Uh, so don't forget to include this as well. Uh, be proactive on this respect <clears throat> so that if there are any real technical problems that are identified and confirmed by the help desk after the, after the submission, uh, they, they, they will be assessed and uh, not sure, but maybe they can be accepted. This is uh, this is uh, this uh, e-grants uh, procedure is less flexible in this respect than the Europe for Citizens programs last platform was uh, in this respect. So, and uh, thank you. And uh, I think there will be a questions and answer session. So I'd be happy to answer to your questions. Uh, <clears throat> oh, voila. Thank you, Fabian. Many, many thanks for uh, your presentation. It's it's really sometimes for the the small civil society organizations, not uh, I mean as universities or something, but the, the really smaller ones had uh, and will have maybe many questions and issues with this new, 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 new. Uh, new portal, but uh, but it's very important also this technical explanation and of course uh, we open the floor to the people who ask questions uh, on the chat or even uh, if you go if you would uh, ask some questions to to the content in general the program to Gilles Pelayo or just technical questions on this uh, nowadays open call for this 2022 so we have a small time now till 11 o'clock to this before uh, mo moving on to the next table. Maybe I, I can start with, with a question just to uh, allow for some time for other people to jump in. Uh, maybe it would be a question uh, mainly for uh, Gilles. Um, uh, yesterday, uh, uh, the French President Macron uh, announced among the priorities of the the French presidency for, for the uh, coming semester, for first half of, of uh, 2022, uh, that history will be, history education mostly, will be one of the, of the priorities they intend to work. And I think uh, he even announced uh, a meeting or some kind of initiative at the end of the semester. So my question would be, is there already some some work being done with the presidency of the council in, in this respect or this comes more or less as a as a new thing that will have to unfold uh during the presidency so in other words i would like to know uh, you have mentioned and i think we're all very grateful for that that remark about the the, the collaboration let's say or the working together between the european parliament and the, the european commission so my question would be uh how about the Council and the Commission, and more specifically in the view of the uh, upcoming French presidency. Thank you very much. Thanks, Martin. To, to be honest, uh, let's say uh, I don't have details about uh, what uh, the French presidency has in mind. It was very interesting and uh, refreshing to see that um, history would be one of the, um, the priorities of the uh, next EU Council uh, presidency. Fortunately, uh, in part, thanks to uh, networks such as uh, Johan, we really don't start, start from scratch at the European level. And the, uh, you know, the remembrance strand of Europe for citizens for, for a very long time has fostered um, European uh, approaches um uh, to uh, to history and you know there were even initiatives uh, before the the program let's say the, the european level of governance has devoted financial means to to supporting such such a project so i'm really really excited uh it's true that uh, let's say in the uh, uh in the among the the three uh, institutions parliament commission council 
I mean, until now, it hadn't been so much um, so much of a of a priority. Perhaps uh, uh, talking about um, history issues, um, but but now let let's see uh, let's see what they uh, they come up with. And uh, it's good to have uh, active networks such as a, a home to be able to um, to chip in uh, this uh, this initiative at our level. We will make sure that. Um, our partners, our beneficiaries can uh, can bring their, uh, let's say, firepower uh, and then uh, and their analytical capacity to to whatever uh, initiative is taken uh, by um, by the French, you know, over the common the coming semester. Thank you. I think that there is a question. Uh, to Fabian, how how will you operate regarding those actions not selected in 2021 that want to apply again in 2022? Is there any specific recommendation besides for uh, resolution? Yes, if you if you uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, so if you look at <clears throat> On the feedback that was given to to the applicants, it is a much detailed, much more detailed feedback that we had uh, before for European Remembrance. So <clears throat> the experts are are, are uh, quite into details in the evaluation of the project. So you can see uh, where your project has uh, has uh, difficulties or or. Uh, a lack of information or this kind of things. So if you develop on that, or <clears throat> yes, if you de develop on those, uh, this can improve your proposal. But uh, uh, proposals are evaluated every year. So <clears throat> by sometimes different experts, even if you resubmit it, uh, sometimes it will be evaluated by a different expert. Uh, uh, or experts even so i uh, this is what i would suggest really to to read through the 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 esr which we call it esr evaluation summary report and uh, try to focus on what uh, what was said that it's not uh, correctly developed or lack of information on this kind of things thank you uh, marcus i think that you are asking uh, hi Thank you. Yeah. To be here also. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks for the presentation to the colleagues from uh, from the agency. So um, I should first say that I'm really happy that the Europe for Citizens program is continued in this new surf, the form of the new surf program. But my my question would be, and in particular now to Shil, also, how is the perception that uh, the focus, the thematic focus of the program continues to be rather narrow, as was in the former Europe for Citizens program, in the sense of the focus is clearly on totalitarian regimes, the resistance to those totalitarian regimes. Would you have liked to see maybe a bit of a broadening in the sense of including also maybe more aspects of colonialism, other aspects of European history? Because one of the points of criticism has been that by focusing so strongly only on totalitarianism, we are maybe not necessarily forgetting about other aspects, but it seems that you measure everything by the standards of totalitarianism in comparison to which, you know, most other elements of European history appear rather, you know, unproblematic. So in other words, would you have liked to see also at the, at the political level more ambition to go beyond that focus or do you think it's good to keep that focus? So that would be my question. The, uh, the work program of the European Commission is, uh, is what it is, uh, Marcus, so to speak, you know, in, uh, in its, uh, in its uh, infinite wisdom, the, uh, <laughs> the Commission has, uh, has approved this. I think, you know, it's not you know, as narrow um, as this in the sense that there is a part of, I would say, history also in the, in the full thematic uh, uh, focus of the program that uh, that needs to be uh, respected, and particularly when we approach um, history at the uh, European level, let's say, and uh, at the EU level also, uh, which is uh, even narrower than the European level uh, at large. So, so um, there, 
there's this aspect of respect for for or the historical heritage of what we've been uh, doing uh, in part also um, uh, that reflects um, uh, the uh, the interest and thematic focus of uh, of some of the stakeholders traditional stakeholders of the the program does that but i would argue that the uh, the the chair program globally as it is uh, written, it's a regulation adopted by the European Parliament and, and the Council at, at, the, at the top, then the, the work program of the Commission, which is adopted annually, and then the way the calls for proposals uh, are redacted at the, uh, at the practical and more technical level, they still leave uh, ample room for, for innovative projects in possibly all fields that are of um, of uh, European EU relevance, and there are many. And the, the proof of that is that even though there is indeed, and we have to acknowledge, is a, a kind of focus on on the issues you you have mentioned, we have really a track record of um, of supporting projects in a wide variety uh, of topics. There is a legitimate uh, emphasis on uh, on issues that sometimes resonate with the present situation. You know, hot topics: uh, migration, uh, liberation routes, uh, uh, populism, uh, that kind of issue, and that's that's fair enough. Um, I believe uh, this was very much, by the way, coming back to the question of Marty. The, the, the way in which the, the French president uh, pitched his, uh, his need to, to go back to the history of, of Europe. But um, it's not, not too narrow, I would conclude. Thank you. I mean, we, we should invite uh, Macron next year to take this talk and talk about colonialism, to <laughs> exiles, migrations. All these concepts are inside the program, but of course, this, you know, remember the totalitarianism is all kind of a, an umbrella. Aureol, please. Yes, uh, well, Aureol. Thank, Aureol, yeah. thank you, Jordi, and thank you to, to all the speakers for the um, very um, uh, interesting presentations. Okay, I have a very practical question. Uh, since from Eurom, we usually invite um, different um, uh, targets and different uh, partners from all over Europe and beyond the, the EU border. So uh, my question is, uh, so far, what non-EU countries had already signed the agreement to be eligible for the, for the remembrance call? Zero. No, no, for the moment, it's still, uh, it's still early days in the, uh, in the program. And these things take time, uh, association agreement, there are sort of international uh, negotiations. So uh, some of them are, have expressed um, interest, but for the moment it's, uh, it's zero. You know, that's the, uh, a bit the uh, unfortunate issue of having, you know, multi uh, annual financial perspective. We start all over again every seven years, so to speak. Huh? And, uh, and this time, particularly the regulations and everything, they were ready uh, only at the beginning of this year, like in, in spring. So there's, there's time needed to, to start all over again the association of, um, of third countries. Uh, it, it won't take, you know, forever, but uh, it may take, you know, some good weeks, months, because, because these are international negotiations in the framework with uh, some of these countries, particularly the um, Western Balkan countries, the, uh, the countries with the perspective of, of accession, you know, of a, of a solid framework of managing the relations of these countries with the EU, so there are association agreements. So there's a kind of a whole scenography of, uh, of managing this. It will come. Um, it will come eventually, but it's you know not unlikely that the, at the end of the day the whole process that uh, takes a. It's a guesstimate. Huh? It's not an information. A whole good year, you know, since the adoption of the regulations last year. So, so perhaps around beginning spring of uh, next year we will have a, a good wave of um, of first associated countries to the to the program. 
So if they are not uh, eligible right now and be before the deadline, sorry, they we cannot include them in, in, in possible projects. May I? Vas-y, <clears throat> vas-y, Peter. Okay. Uh, uh, I will just quickly uh, open the, the call, you know, just to to quote the call, I bet you probably read it. Uh, you can include them, uh, but they will not be eligible for funding. So basically, if um, if you include them and uh, you give them funds and they are not eligible at the time of the signature of the grant agreement, they will become ineligible partners, which doesn't mean that the whole project is ineligible if it's selected. Then during the negotiation process uh, for the contract signature, they will, we will request you to replace them or put them as associated partners, but they cannot receive uh, <coughs> EU funding, okay, uh, directly. <coughs> okay, so uh, uh, just uh, quickly, I try to open the call to, to quote you this part of the call, uh, because I don't, I don't know it by heart, I just know it by feeling. So <laughs> I uh, 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 control F L E G. No, this is too much. I think. Oh. Yeah, I have a. Uh, all my kids are at home. Sorry for the noise, because they are all homeschooled, and they take also my Wi-Fi uh, away. Mm -hmm. Okay, eligible, eligible. Yeah, here it is. So it says, uh, 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 says, yes. Uh, so countries associated to the SERF program of countries which are in ongoing negotiations for an association agreement and, there were, and where the agreement enters into force before the grant signature. Okay, so the... <clears throat> It means it, uh, so if the negotiations are already ongoing when the projects are submitted, they are eligible if the, 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 it enters into force before the signature. So it leaves you, uh, uh, how to say, you have to submit until March. So we have to have ongoing negotiations uh, until March. Uh, basically. Well, thank you. I don't know if you have some technical closing uh, and Fernanda about the, the following session online. Well, anyway, um, thanks. I do have, I do have a, a practical information. Uh, well, I think now uh, Jordi is, is the, the pause, the break. So that means that we uh, have time to, to network. And uh, we would like to invite you to, for the next half hour, to visit the museum uh, online for the place, but also uh, be aware that we you can engage in one-on-one -on -one conversations just by uh, clicking through, uh, to the avatars uh, in the, the Tola platform. And, uh, and then, of course, explore the videos, the different material that uh, is part of the conference. Uh, the, the, the important practical information here is that participants can stay connected to Zoom while they are, uh, let's say, in the museum virtually. Huh? So no need, to, no need to disconnect. Just leave things as they are, and then we should uh, be back on Zoom, uh, all of us, uh, at 11.30. Hmm? Okay. Anyway, uh, thank you very much, Gilles, uh, Peter, uh, for your participation here. And also, this is very, very good to have a contact also in, in the Commission and your agency in Brussels to have this feedback and going on uh, process of... Thanks of to you and spread the word. Let's say all the network needs also to, to mobilize all the, uh, you know, your connections, friends, associates yeah. to to participate in the in the program we need you know a maximum of um, of good uh, project proposals in the coming uh, harvest so um, so voilà thanks okay. again for the invitation merci merci